This video is part of a series where I'm reviewing the most known whiteboards. In my whiteboard review sheet, you'll find a summary of all the features for all these whiteboards that you can download for free from my website. The link is in the description below. So let's start exploring the Mural dashboard. I'm on a Mural free plan, and that's what I'll be showing you. The dashboard is very nice and intuitive, and a lot of emphasis is put on templates. We have direct access to popular templates, but we can access all of them in the Templates tab. In the Murals tab, we can find our whiteboards. So let's go and create Mural. Similar to Miro, Mural is pushing again for their templates. However, to be consistent with what I've done in the other whiteboard reviews, I'll go for a blank canvas. Here at the bottom, we see one of the biggest differences of the current version of the Mural whiteboard compared to the earlier one. By default, Mural has a limited canvas size, but we can tick this option to go for an infinite canvas. It's still in beta version, but Mural has definitely made a smart move, catching up on the infinite canvas that was missing earlier, but leaving the options to go for a limited canvas, which could be useful for certain applications. I will create a new one with an infinite canvas. So let's start from the top left. The first option is to go back to the dashboard, and the second one is text. The icon looks like a sticky note, so let's see what we get here. Indeed, text and sticky notes go all under this icon. So let's start with text. I've inserted the title and now let's see what we can do with it. As usual, we can drag and drop to change the size, we can rotate it, move it around, lock it. There are two types of lock. The normal lock that can be unlocked by anyone and the facilitator lock, where only the facilitator can unlock the object. The next function is zoom to text which will place the object at the center of the board. We can decrease or increase the font size, change the font, make it bold, italic, underlined, strike through. We have align options, bullet points, and ordered list. There are 30 predefined colors, but we can always add our custom colors. We can add background color to the text box, and we can add a link to the text. So again, I'll enter the link to my website, and let's see how it looks like. If I now click on open link, my website is opened. At the far right, we have the switch type option that allows us to change the object type to sticky notes or shapes. For example, let's change this to sticky note. If we are unhappy with it, we can always click on undo. Let's see what other types of text we can insert. There's a text box. The text box has exactly the same options as the title text that we've seen earlier. The last option of the top three one is the drag comment one. So I'll drag it and place it over the title text. A right panel appears where I can insert my comment. And I can also mention somebody else on the board. So click on send. And now if I click on this comment, I can read what I've just written. So other comments can be added here where participants can reply. So you can have a sort of chat associated to a certain object. The number of comments will be shown here. If I now move the title text, the comment will not be linked to it. To do that, I remove the link to my website, then right-click on the comment icon, display the link, copy it, and then place the link here. Now, if I move the title text around and click on Go To, then I will be brought to the comment. If you're finding this video useful, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the like button so more people will have the chance to watch it and it will help me grow my channel. Thank you. Moving on to sticky notes, we find three types, square, rectangular, and circular. I actually like quite a lot the different sticky note shapes and this feature can't be found in the other whiteboards we've seen. Sticky notes have very similar formatting options. In addition, we can select the border and change the color. We can also add a tag. Let's make it larger. And if we want to resize it to the normal size, just click here. OK, let's move on to the next tool. That's shapes and connectors. We now know already how these things work. So let's put a connector to the sticky note and connect it to this title text box. Now, if I move the sticky note around, the two objects will stay connected. There are six predefined shapes. The next tool is icons. Let's insert a mobile, for example. And let's send it to back. So we can move the sticky note and center it. Now, if I want to group these two objects, I can press on Shift, and do a multiple selection, arrange them, align them, or filter by type. 
If I right click, I'll find the option to group them. So now I can move them around together. The next option is frameworks. A framework is useful to organize the content visually. And you can choose a framework from a number of templates. So let's pick, for example, this business model canvas. The next tool is images. We can search for images on Creative Cloud, Giphy, Unsplash, or import our own images from computer, from Google Drive or Dropbox. The next tool is Content Library. This is a place where you can store content that you've built and you want to have access to very quickly. Moving towards the bottom, you find the Import Files function, where we can import files from computer, Google Drive or Dropbox. Any type of file can be uploaded and try to load a Word document. So it looks like that when we insert a file, only preview will be shown on the board. But if you want to access it, then you'll have to open a link. The next tool is the draw one. After clicking on the draw icon, and we can choose the color. Let's try to write something with the different thicknesses. Let's change color. We have the highlighter and the eraser. Also Mural, like Miro, only offers a stroke eraser and there is no pixel by pixel eraser. If we are done drawing and we want to go back to the toolbar, then we have to click on done drawing. Moving to the top left, we find the settings for the Mural, the undo redo buttons, and here we find the advanced collaboration features, like the voting session. So let's start a voting session and let's give three votes per person, decide what people can vote on. And here it's nice because we can also select a portion of the whiteboard where the voting is active. So let's see how this works. Let's start it. I gave one vote here, one vote here. And let's see if I can give a second vote. Yes, I can give a second vote to an object. Different to Miro, there is no integrated timer for the voting. However, Mural do have a timer and we'll look at it in a second. Let's end the voting session. And these are the results. The next option is private mode. This is very useful if you want you or other people to only see their own content. The next option is the custom toolbar. That's also nice if you're using some features more than others and you want the toolbar to fit your needs. Moving on to laser pointer. This works without even clicking. So as I move my mouse, I have this little snake following me. And now the timer. You can set the time and play sound at the end. Here you see a description of all the options that are available to facilitators. They are called facilitator superpowers in Mural. And now let's move to the top right. Here we see the number of participants, sharing options, and you can decide whether the people you invite are members or visitors where visitors can only join the mural, whereas members need a mural account and can join the workspace. The mural can be exported as PDF, image, or all links, images, and text in a zip file. We can find the export option also here. And you can decide whether you want to export the whole whiteboard or just a selection. There's a chat function, comments, where all comments are displayed. We have a log of all the activities. You can add an outline. Let's add two other steps to the outline. Now, if we go to presentation mode, we start from the first step in the outline, then move on to the second one, and then to the third one. We can also add instructions. So that's very useful if you want to show a process to your audience. With the outline instructions and high reveal steps, you can use the outline to guide people around the canvas. And you can also hide steps you're not ready for people to use. You can find objects on the whiteboard and search for help. At the bottom right, we have the navigation tab, which is telling us where we are in the whiteboard. And again, that's very useful if you're working with large whiteboards. At the bottom with the plus sign, we can add members and we can add reactions like celebrate, heart or thumbs up. When multiple participants are present as a facilitator, you have the options to draw the attention of all participants to the point of the whiteboard that you want to share. That's the summon feature. My whiteboard review document summarizes all features, so go download it from my website. And that was Mural. You now have two options. Watch the review of a more simpler whiteboard like this one, or move on to the next advanced whiteboard like this one, this one or this one.